Cramp. If you've ever had it, you know that it sucks. There's a lot of myths around cramp. What causes it? Electrolyte sweat loss. Let's take a look at some of the research behind cramp, see what actually causes it, see what you can do about it if you cramp, and what causes those cramps in the middle of the night when you're laying in bed. Cramp. What is it all about? Well, if you've ever had cramp, you know it sucks for one. And two, there's a lot of myths around cramp. What causes it, that sort of thing, how to get rid of it. And today I just want to take a look at some of the research, some of the facts, and have a look at what we do actually know rather than running with these myths. Now a lot of people put the cause of cramp down to electrolyte imbalances through sweat loss. And what I want to do is have a look at those because it doesn't actually seem that these here are causing cramp. One really interesting study that looks at this was a study out of South Africa looking at Ironman athletes. So they had 210 people that were participating in Ironman South Africa, I believe it was. Race conditions were about 20 degrees Celsius, around about 70% humidity. So rather warm and you know rather humid. And anyway, what they did is at the end of the race, they categorized the 210 athletes into either those that experienced cramp, they were the cramper group, and those that didn't experience any cramp, they were the non-crampers. And then they had a look at a bunch of measures. The first one was sweat loss. All of these people were weighed at the start of the race and then weighed again at the end. Any difference in weight loss is largely put down to water loss through sweat. And the interesting thing was, is that the people that cramped had no difference in sweat loss compared to the people that didn't cramp. So it didn't look like those people that were heavier sweaters cramped more. There was no difference. Plasma sodium, so this is looking at one of the key electrolytes in the body. What they did is they took a blood sample before the race, had a look at how much sodium or salt is in the blood, and then had a look at the same... Or took another sample after the race and had a look at the plasma sodium again. The really interesting thing was that whether or not if you cramped or you didn't cramp, there was no difference in the change in the people's plasma sodium. So it didn't, have, it didn't matter how much electrolytes you lost, that didn't affect if you cramped or not. So kind of interesting, one of the big myths blown out of the water, electrolytes. The other thing they looked at, and while it's not a really bulletproof measure, it's interesting to look at, was flexibility training. Often you'll see, you know, people have cramps and they say, oh, you need to stretch more or you're inflexible. The people that cramped, people that didn't cramp, what they did is they asked them to keep a track of how many times they did flexibility training leading up to the race. They all performed sort of similar amount of stretching and it didn't affect their cramping. Like I say, not a very... Like I say, not a very uh, bulletproof sort of measure, but interesting nonetheless. So what did actually predict cramps? Well, one thing that was related to cramps were those that had cramped in the previous 10 races that they did were more likely to cramp in this one. So if you've cramped in the past, you're more likely to cramp in the future. And there's actually some really interesting research starting to emerge at the moment about a potential cramping gene. So some people have a gene that predisposes them to cramp more, which sort of sucks for those people, but that's the way it is, I guess. And the other thing that was related to cramping was overall finishing time. Those people that finished fastest cramped the most. Those people that, that raced the fastest or finished the fastest cramped the most. Whereas those people that are a little slower didn't seem to cramp. So what is causing cramping? Well, all, well, most of the research points towards a neuromuscular problem. So this is your muscle, and when we talk about neuromuscular, it's all the nervous pathways leading to the muscle and causing the muscle to fire. So it's a neuromuscular problem. And it seems to be mainly a mismatch between what happens in training and what happens on race day. And a lot of these things are time, so often 
in training, you won't train as long as you do in, in a race. So say at the end of an Ironman in the run, you know, you've done your swim, you've done your bike, and you're getting into the run, and you start cramping, you know, because your body's not used to doing that exercise for that long. Some people say, well, I've ridden that long, I've run that long before. And the second thing is you probably haven't done it at that intensity. So you probably haven't swum, swum that hard for that long, then biked that hard for that long, and then ran that hard for that long. So the intensity, there's a bit of a mismatch there as well. And this can be seen in like really short races. Say you may have a 5K or a really hard bike race, and you can be cramping up within 20 minutes. Okay, and it's... it's it's not long enough to get an electrolyte imbalance, so it must be something to do with the intensity and the neuromuscular pathways. And then specificity as well. This is really, really crucial. Some people, you know, will train on road for an off-road run. The coast to coast in New Zealand is a classic one. People will train all year, get to the coast to coast run, and then experience cramp on the coast to coast course because it's a very specific terrain. And even though people may have run over it before, they probably haven't done it at the same intensity following a ride at that same intensity as well. So have a look at your time that you're training, your intensity and your specificity. If you can nail all of those aspects of your training, usually that takes care of a lot of the cramping problem. What about if you find yourself in a race, in a race cramping up, what can you do then? Because who cares about the research? when you're in the middle of a race and you're cramping, tell me what I can do right now. Cramp is a signal from your body saying you're working beyond your means, you need to slow down. These neuromuscular pathways aren't being able to fire and relax fast enough. So you need to slow down, reduce the, the work rate. Now what about stretching? What about cramp stop that you can spray under your tongue? Those things are great in that they make you slow down. If you're on your bike and you're starting to cramp through the legs, then doing some stretching is going to slow your intensity. If you stand up, stretch, um, you know, still riding, or if you're running, you know, get a ping in your hamstrings, you bend over, give it a stretch out, you're slowing down, it's stopping you, you know. Whether or not it's these things that are working, probably not. It's slowing you down so your body gets a chance to catch up with you if you like. Cramp stop, the mere physical task of getting it out of your bag or out of your back pocket, having to slow down, change up your movement pattern is probably the thing that is uh, easing the cramp symptoms rather than the cramp stop itself. Change your muscle groups and change your movement pattern. So stand up, stretch, you know, move around so that it's not the same muscles being loaded in the same, same way. So that's pretty much all you can do. You can't really push through cramp. It's just going to keep coming on stronger and stronger until you have to slow down, until your body makes you lie down on the side of the track or the side of the road in a crippling mess because it make, it's making you stop, it's making you stop. So the best thing is that first sign of cramp, slow down then rather than pushing through it till it gets worse and worse and worse. Now I had the extra question as well about non-exercise cramp. So you know what, you know this is the cramp when you're in bed at night and you're getting a cramp in your foot or your calf. A lot of these happen in older populations, so elderly people, and there are some medications that can cause a genuine electrolyte imbalance, okay, but we're not going to really look at those today. Also, you know, if you're in bed after an abnormal day of activity, maybe you've been standing longer than usual, maybe you went for a long walk, maybe you had a hard training session, that tends to be when these non-exercise cramps hit. And if you think back to everything we just talked about, there's a fatiguing of the neuromuscular pathways. They've had to fire in a way that they're not used to that day. The muscles aren't used to it. So when you start to move them again, they're fatigued. They can't fire and relax like they usually do. So the muscle cramps up. So a lot of information there about cramps, key take home messages, it doesn't seem to be sweat loss or electrolyte imbalances that cause cramp. Cramps looks like it's mainly a neuromuscular problem. If you get cramp in a race, you probably need to button things back a little bit before it gets too out of control. And non-exercise cramps seem to be caused by the same uh, mechanism as exercise cramps and that it's a neuromuscular 
fatigue if you like. There you have it, cramp in a nutshell. If you've got any questions, please let me know. Make sure you subscribe. Click the subscribe button now. You're going to get all of my latest videos directly to you as soon as I upload them so you don't miss out on anything. If you've enjoyed the cramping video, you want to expand your mind a little bit more, why not check out power to weight ratio and improving your climbing on the bike or whether or not it is better to train in the morning or in the evening for your performance. So check those videos out now so that you can train harder but most importantly, train smarter.